In this video, we're building up the pressure. How's it going on guys and girls? Welcome back to Ben Aquila Painting. My name is Graham and welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the basics of laying down paint with an airbrush. But first, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. A lot of people that watch these videos aren't subscribed and judging by the likes, you do tend to like them. So it's the best way to help the channel grow. Now, airbrushing. Before we start, we're gonna need a few things. So we're gonna need some paints, some water, a flow improver, an old brush, a compressor and obviously an airbrush. In this video I won't be showing you how to set up the airbrush or anything like that. I'm going to assume that you already know. This video is all about how to lay down colour and simple base coats with shadows and highlights. The only thing I will mention is to make sure your PSI on your compressor is set. But if you've got a compressor with a variable gauge, make sure it's between 25 and 30 PSI. So of course it's all subjective, so have a play with it and uh, see what you're comfortable with. Now the airbrush is all set up and ready to go, we're gonna be laying down thin coats until we reach a good opacity. When we're loading our airbrush, we want to make sure our paints are thinned correctly. So that means not too thick and not too thin. Too thick, it can clog your airbrush. If it's too thin, you can get spider webbing and the paint can act just like a wash. Now, I understand that this can sound really daunting if you're new to airbrushing, but don't worry. Just grab some paper and have a play around with different thicknesses of the paint and different pressures of your airbrush. Just take that little bit of time to get to know your tools. And before you know it, you'll be more than comfortable to get started on a mini. When thinning my paint, I use a little bit of water and a little bit of flow improver from Vallejo. If you don't have flow improver or a medium, don't worry, you can just use water. But I like to use a little bit of flow improver. It helps the paint to flow through the airbrush properly, but also without sounding stupid, it makes the paint a little bit wetter for longer, extending my work time. I do recommend when loading your airbrush, putting your thinner or your water in first before your paint, so you don't run the risk of clogging with just pure paint. But by putting our thinner or water in first, we avoid this and it mixes a lot easier. You may have heard some people say that you want the consistency of milk when you're thinning your paints in an airbrush. To be quite honest, that's, that's, so I'm kind of sitting on the fence with this one. It depends on what paints you're using, if you're using just water or if you're using medium, a flow improver, but play around with it, see what consistencies you like to use and then go from there. I strongly recommend playing around with the products that you use regularly. That way you know how they act and you know how they interact together. Now we have our brush all set up and our paint thinned, it's time to paint. Now, the airbrush that I have isn't a flashy expensive one. It's a dead cheap one that came with my compressor. The two main things you wanna make sure your airbrush is, it's a gravity fed airbrush, and that is a dual action airbrush. Graham, what the hell does that mean? Don't worry, it's a lot simpler than it sounds. All gravity fed means the cup is on top of the brush, it uses gravity to draw the paint down into the airbrush. And all the dual action means is on the trigger, you push down for air and you pull back for paint so you can vary the amount of paint you're using. Pull back a little for a little bit of paint, pull back a lot for a lot more paint. I've found this type of airbrush to be the best for miniature painting. There's loads of companies that do loads of variations, but as long as it's gravity fed and it's a dual action, you're on for a winner. Also as a bonus, because we can get only air through the airbrush, you can actually use that to speed up the drying time on your minis. Now, one of the features that most airbrushes comes with that I found really helps when I first started airbrushing is the trigger valve at the back of the brush. What that does is stops the needle going back after a certain point, giving us perfect control for the amount of paint we're using. On mine, we can open and close this by the simple screw at the back. And I'm pretty sure in saying that most airbrushes have something like this. For me, I call this a bit of a cheat or a bit of a quick way to learning mastery on trigger control. When I first started using airbrushes, I found that you can use too much paint really easily. Having that trigger valve really helps to mitigate that. The last thing we want is to blast paint all over our freshly primed mini and have to clean it all off and start again. What I do is close that trigger valve, press the trigger down for air and pull it back. As it's pulled back, release that trigger valve until I'm happy with the amount of paint that's coming through. Too much paint, just close it up a little bit. Not enough, just open it back up. While you have that there, you will never be able to go past that point. So you're never going to be completely covering your mini with paint. 
I very rarely use the airbrush with the trigger valve all the way open. So I've put together a little table just as a rule of thumb. Doing base coats and priming, no more than halfway open. First layers to mid-tones, one third to one quarter open. Secondary layers and highlights, very minimal amount of paint coming through, just so you can really control those highlights. In this video, you may have surmised that with airbrushing, the key is to have as much control as possible. So keeping that in mind, we're going to be using controlled bursts with the airbrush. This will help your paint dry quicker, but also help you to have really super smooth results. Smoother than a Slaneshi demon whispering in your ear. Die heretic scum! And it's as simple as that. Don't rush yourself, work slowly and just build up that opacity you want. Work your way up to that opacity slowly using light trigger pressure and thin coats. Now we've learned how the airbrush works and how to control it, it's as simple as just rinsing and repeating with the next colors. Adjust the trigger valve accordingly and then off you go. Also as a little bonus tip, when you're changing from color to color doing transitions, don't clean out your airbrush cup. You leave that little bit of the previous color in there and it'll help to get even smoother blends and transitions when you're working up from a dark to a light color. So I start with a dark green and then tip the majority of that out and what's left in there I keep in there and add the lighter green and creating almost like a secondary mid-tone. Keep doing that and building up from darkest to lightest. This will help you get really smooth transitions and blends. Doing this after each step your blends become Barry White smooth. Now we just need to pay attention to where we're putting the paint on the miniature. As I said in the beginning of the video, we're creating our base coats using highlights and shades. We're building up that color from the darkest up. Each time we're adding a lighter color, we're not completely covering the layer before. This will create a beautifully smooth transition up to your lightest highlight color. And to be honest, not really giving too much thought on how real life light will interact with this kind of vehicle, but what will look good on the battlefield. At the end of the day, it's what we think looks best for us minis as individuals. So if you're following along with this top-down approach using the darkest color for our shadows first, building up those mid-tones and highlight colors as we go. Remembering to use small controlled bursts. This rhino is going to be in my Death Guard army so I'm going for a more vibrant green so it fits in with the rest of my army. Really Graham? What gave it away? Once we have our mid-tones down, it's easy enough to do the same thing, adjusting our valve control and painting in smaller, smaller areas to build up that highlight color. For me, to keep that vibrancy in the greens, I'm adding more and more yellow. And there you go, it's as easy as that. Airbrushing is basically broken down into three different parts. Controlling the pressure, the amount of paint that's coming through the airbrush and the thickness of the paint. And utilizing that trigger valve really gives us a quick way to master that trigger control. So to recap, always check your PSI before painting between 25 to 30 PSI as a rule of thumb. Two, ensure your paints are properly thinned. If you have the right consistency, our painting will be easier and smoother every time. Three, use the trigger valve to help maintain the amount of paint you're using and to maintain control. And four, rinse and repeat the steps, building up color in smaller, smaller areas for the best transitions and highlights. Follow these steps and your mini should look something like this. Well, that's it from me for another video of Burning Quilla Painting. Thanks for sticking around to the end and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like, share this video with your friends and comment down below with your airbrushing tips. If you like what I'm doing here at Burning Quilla Painting and want to get involved and support the channel, the best way to do it is on my Patreon. If you want to support the channel, you can for as little as two pound a month, that's less than a pint. If you remember what a pint is, but if you want to do a bit more and get involved with the channel, you can with the other tiers. On my Patreon, you get Patreon shout outs, whip updates from things I'm painting. You can suggest ideas for videos and different minis you want to see me paint on the channel. And also both tiers, you can get access to the Burnt Aquila Painting Discord server. So go check it out, Burnt Aquila Painting on Patreon. The link is down below. But that's it from me at Burn Aquila Painting. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing here. Smash that bell icon so you don't miss anything Burn Aquila Painting and we'll see you in the next one.